Hello there. What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be breaking down the Super Star Destroyer for Star Wars Armada. I have been doing an entire series of breakdowns for every single ship in the game and I've saved the best for last. This is the most amazing ship of all time and I'm so very, very happy that it made its way to Star Wars Armada and I'm going to be talking all about it in this video. If you guys are new here to the channel, we do giveaways all the time. There is still time left to get that lightsaber giveaway entry in. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as uh, simple as that. Plus, I would love to have you guys stick around and join our Discord and check out the social media links if you want to uh, see like photos and there's Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and all that stuff is down in the video description below. Plus, um, if you want to go to Kravok.com, we've got lots of free Armada content there, as well as some, uh, you know, the AI expansion, some of the other, uh, you know, homebrew expansions that I have published out there on Kravok.com. So you can get all that stuff for free over on the website. Subscriptions are now free as well, so uh, get that, you know, click it well, before, before they start charging for it. You might as well get it now. Um, Plus, it helps me out, and it's always a nice thing to do uh, for the people that bring you Armada news and all that good stuff. Plus, it's also good for you because if you, the more things that you're subscribed to that represent your interests, the more targeted videos like the algorithm will give you more Star Wars stuff in general as opposed to stuff that you're not interested in. So that's uh, another good thing. All right, guys, uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this amazing, amazing Bigiature. I call it a Bigiature because the Super Star Destroyer was the largest miniature of all time. Uh, <laughs> definitely the largest miniature that Fantasy Flight Games ever made. Uh, and a lot of people can't even call it a miniature. It's it's so massive. It's the size of a sword. And... Um, and it's uh, you know it like takes two hands to to carry it around. It's 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 absolutely incredible. It is on two large ship bases linked together through a, an extra large piece of cardboard. It initially retailed at two hundred dollars, but after prices have gone up, it's uh, it's it's more expensive than that now. But uh, every once in a while, you can find them on sale, and that's usually the time to try to pick one up if you are looking to do so. Uh, here we show it compared to a Victory Star Destroyer and an Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, it's it's not fully to scale with how it would be next to uh, all of these other ships here. They would be at least half of that size. Um, however, uh, the the problem is uh, Armada is not exactly an, uh, a one-to-one -one scale game. Everything's not uh, everything's not completely in sync with each other. It's, it's got a, a bit of a sliding scale. And even at that sliding scale, the uh, the SSD was a bit of a stretch to justify getting on the tabletop, but it works so well. It's so much fun, and it is even a little bit competitive. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that make this ship kind of stand out and uh, some of the different types of ships, the titles, and some ways that you might run this ship. Uh, one of the things that's unique about this ship being a, a the first huge ship in the game uh, it also has extra hull zones, hull zones that you have never seen before, uh, before viewing this ship in uh, Star Wars Armada. In addition to having a front hull zone, a rear hull zone, and a left and right hull zone, it also has auxiliary left and right hull zones. Those are not counted as the left and right hull zones, but they are auxiliary left and right, so they have their own designation. There's nothing currently that specifies auxiliary hull zones, but if you were to put something like enhanced armament on a Super Star Destroyer that increases your left and right battery armament, it would only apply to the left and right battery armament, not to the auxiliary left and auxiliary right battery armament. It also has some unique movement rules in that it cannot overlap the movement tool when it moves, uh, even while you are lining it up. So you pretty much have to do, you can't do any kind of like shimmy turns with it. You pretty much have to go uh, one and one in this way and one and one that way. It moves from that rear, uh, you know, movement base and it really has some swing to it. It, it. it can, it can, I can't properly demonstrate right now just how swingy this massive base is. Uh, but those of you who have played against it before uh, can attest that it is incredibly large, incredibly huge. It sets up, uh, it can extend very, very far out beyond uh, the normal deployment zone as long as it is touching the rear. Uh, and uh, But it does have some extra rules, like for squadrons, they still have 
a maximum length from your deployment zone that they can be. So you can't just drop, you know, point it straight out and then deploy two squadrons off of the tip. And all of that comes in the rules insert. Uh, but I want to focus a little bit more on, on, on the ship cards. Now, uh, this was the first ship in the game to come, you know, as a huge ship, but also to come with more than two uh, right away. Eventually, we did see other ships that, uh, you know, would would have more than two through all the other methods, whether it would be like that Chimera expansion gave a couple more Star Destroyer cards or Rapid Reinforcements gave other versions of stuff. This one had four ships in the box. And what also made this Super Star Destroyer stand out is that two of those ships were not even legal in standard play. A normal game of Armada is a 400-point game, and only two the top two options, the uh, Command Prototype and the Assault Prototype, uh, are actually able to be run in a standard 400-point game, making them tournament legal, which means these bottom two options are only for fun games or extra-large games or epic games or uh, team games and, and basically any game that exceeds the 400-point limit, which lots of games do, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm actually looking forward to doing a lot more bigger games in the future. Uh, but as it stands right now, only two of these are tournament legal, which is a really fun way to release an expansion to kind of treat its smaller sliding scale size uh, with the disclaimer, oh, well, that one's a, it was a prototype. It wasn't the, the full one. You can't actually run the full one in a normal game, but this is the way they did it. They said, well, but go ahead and run your bigger games and still run that full one. And it's, it's a really beautiful thing to be able to do. Uh, let's talk about the Star Dreadnought Command prototype first. This is our cheapest option to be able to run uh, this Super Star Destroyer. Notice that, uh, you know, as far as the title, it is considered a Star Dreadnought. So this is, uh, it's only 220 points, still making it a massively expensive ship. Uh, but one of the things you'll also notice is that the ship cards for these ships are much bigger and wider than all of the other ship cards. They are uh, like full photo, they're like postcard size. And, uh, and for good reason, because there's so much more information to be able to put on these. Uh, the, the, both of the tournament legal versions of the ship the, are, are, are similar in a lot of ways. The uh, command prototype has 22 hull. Uh, now, I want to talk about uh, huge ships and this amount of hull, because they also have an extra rule that says if you're able to get them down to half hull, you're going to get uh, half points off of the ship. So you're going to get like 110 points if you're able to get this thing down to 11 hull at the end of the game. Um, other ships don't have that. The Starhawk, for example, doesn't have that role, even though it's kind of in the similar ballpark. To you know, it, it's got less um, less hull, but it doesn't. It's still only a large ship, so it doesn't have this half points rule. Uh, how, whereas this ship does, which is very significant because. Uh, a lot of people will just get it to half points and say that's, and I'll stop there, uh, provided that it's you know that you're not at risk of running an engineering command and then popping back up over. Um, star, huge ships also, like this ship, also has the ability when they reveal a command dial, they get a matching token. So you're going to be able to, for example, engineer for four points and then also spend that token every turn for two more points. You can get six points of engineering every round. So it makes it just a real beast to try to take down. Uh, if we look at our shields, we've got six shields in the front, three shields in the side, three shields in the auxiliary sides, and two shields in the rear. Um, another thing you're gonna notice is that our values being four command, this was the first four command ship to show up in the game. Starhawk actually came out after this, even though I've already talked about the Starhawk, but this was a four command ship, meaning you had to plan four turns in advance what you wanted to do. Uh, five value for squadrons. This one actually makes a pretty nice carrier if you're thinking of running a, a lot of TIE fighters with a Star Dreadnought command prototype. Uh, four engineering, of course, we already talked about that, and that's pretty strong. You're going to notice there is no yaw at all on this thing. It has a maximum speed of two, but has no yaw at all, which means if you want to turn this massive ship, you have to do an uh, a navigation dial or some other method to actually turn the ship. Now, um, you know, and, and that's an important point because usually I will almost exclusively only run any type of Super Star Destroyer with Moff Jerjerod 
as my commander, he gives you the ability to get a free yaw up to two on your last uh, on your last value. So if you're at speed one, you just get to turn at speed two or at, at yaw two. If you're at speed two, you get the, nothing in the first, but then two more yaw uh, on the on the last one. And it just costs you one damage for that, and you can put that to a shield in the rear or wherever you want to be able to do that with Jerjerod, um, who's exceptionally good. Uh, other commander options, uh, you know, are sometimes I've seen some people use Thrawn with an, you know, with an SSD, uh, but I but I also think um, also think Piet, I mean, who came with the SSD, uh, certainly works well enough on it. But at the same time. Um, Piet is only one point cheaper than Jerjerod, and I think Jerjerod does does everything better. So Jerjerod's like the, the only time I'm not going to use Jerjerod if it's like a dare or a challenge to see if I can have fun with Piet because Jerjerod's just kind of the champion of of Super Star Destroyers because he may, means you won't ever have to worry about Nav because if this ship if you get stuck and you can't turn then you're really going to have a bad day because this ship really needs to position itself to take advantage of that incredibly monstrous frontal arc. If you're not able to do that, first off, you can go off the board pretty easy because you're so much bigger. And then two, uh, you know, you're kind of wasting all the points you put into this ship and to upgrade it. So again, no yaw on any versions of this ship. Um, I definitely suggest taking Moff Chergerod to remedy that. There are other ways. Again, Piet is okay. Thrawn is isn't too bad, and there are some other ones that you can that we could talk about like more theoretically. I'll point out, Mahdi does nothing for this ship because it is a huge ship. Mahdi only affects small, medium, and large ships, and this is neither of those. Um, so, like you know, the other commanders and other cards that reference ship size, this is considered a huge ship. It is not considered a large ship, but it is bigger than a, a large um other thing i want to point out that's pretty unique on this is it come starts with six defense tokens so you're gonna have two braces two to redirects and two contains which is exceptional uh, to, that basically nothing is a single accuracy means nothing to a ship like this because you have so many defense tokens and multiples of each uh unless of course you do swap some things out huge ships are also uh, have a special rule that says they can't gain any upgrade types, so you wouldn't be able to put Minister Tua on a ship like this. Uh, to, you know, or, or you couldn't gain a defensive retrofit or anything like that um, through cards that grant additional slots. Uh, if we look at upgrades, we're going to see three officer slots on this ship. Uh, we're going to see weapons team, two command. Uh, uh, fleet commands, you're going to see offensive retrofit and ion cannon and turbo laser. So, uh, a lot of upgrade potential, lots of really good stuff here. Um, this one is most often used, uh, you know, if you're going to run this one, a lot of times you will definitely put some kind of fleet command on there. And you're definitely the th triple officer, definitely, definitely, definitely triple officer. Uh, there's so many really good options uh, for, for, especially for something like this. Damage control officer is a great one to make those double contains really, really nice because people are definitely going to come want to come at you. Uh, Emperor Palpatine crew is a really, really nice one. There's there's so many really nice ones. Um, I'm really actually a big fan of Ozzel getting an extra speed one maneuver on your at the beginning of the first turn because usually when you're running a Super Star Destroyer, you don't get to do all that many crazy. Um, deployment activation, so you're almost always out deployed, but he allows you to start out, and then if you have Jerjerod, you can now then turn, you can take an extra damage on the first turn, but you get to face whichever way you want, and your opponent can kind of can't out deploy that, because that's at the start, um, you know, uh, at the start of the first round, so you're getting to do some pretty cool groovy stuff with that. Uh, and that's the command prototype. Let's move over to uh, my favorite version, but it's slightly more expensive. The Star Dreadnought Assault prototype. Really cool artwork here of it in a in a like a, in a space dock too. It's just so it's just so beautiful. We actually have a really an, an increased frontal armament on this one, an increased squadron armament, uh, and and different different uh, upgrade cards. Uh, so we're looking at 250 points. So it's very expensive. You're not going to have many points left over. Not many at all. Usually when people run something like this, they're running a flotilla with it. Maybe some squadrons, or maybe one small ship, uh, but usually not a whole lot. I've, some some Super Star Destroyer builds will run two flotillas to try to squeak out as many extra activations as they can. Uh, but usually if you're running something like this, you don't have much else. 
Um, still 22 hull, a, a red and a blue for anti-squadron. Um, this uh, is just, you know, great anti-squadron range. Uh, still 4-5-4 four, four for your stats. Still same defense token, still the same movement. Um, we've got six hull, three shields, three shields, two shields. Or, I'm sorry, six shields, three, three, two. Uh, so same shields. Uh, we've got five red in the front, four blue in the front. Massive, incredibly huge front arc. Um, side arcs are also pretty impressive with three red, two blue, and a black. Auxiliary is still not bad with two red, two blue, and a black. And then you have rainbow in the rear, which is nice if you're able to put salvo defense tokens on this. Uh, while you can't add upgrade types, you can modify defense tokens to cards that will add or, or swap those out. For upgrades, we still have the, the triple officer and, of course, the weapons team. Important thing here, weapons team used to be great to put gunnery teams on this and you would fire all three shots out the front. But since gunnery team has been changed, you can really only do two shots out the front now. Uh, but still, uh, a lot of times people don't just let themselves stay in your front arc. If your opponent has their entire fleet or at least three, sh three ships that you can target in your front arc, I don't want you to feel too bad. Because that means your opponent is putting, leaving all of their stuff in your front arc. Um, so still, even even now, only being able to take two shots out of the front arc, it's still very, very nice. We do have two offensive retrofits, two ion cannons, and two turbo lasers. So this one has the upgrade slots to make it an absolute death machine. And I am here for it all day long. I absolutely love this one. Again, once you spend all those points to outfit it and put your commander on there, you're going to have very little points left. So if you're going to run this thing bare bones, you might be able to fit another decent ship, probably small ship in there. But outside of that, uh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're probably not going to have much else left over you know, by the time you take advantage of all those juicy upgrade slots. Let's talk about some of our non-tournament legal ships. Let's start off with the Executor 1 Class Star Dreadnought. So now we're getting into the the version of the Super Star Destroyer that more accurately represents the Imperial Super Star Destroyers that we see on screen, right? Like, we got the red engines there. It's flying over Hoth. There's your Episode 2 kind of executor. Now, a couple of things. 381 points. This is not tournament legal because you have to have a commander. Cheapest commander is 20 points. That would put you at 401, and that's not going to fit. So they, they point costed it at 381 deliberately to make it expensive, but also affordable potentially, but also at the same time completely unavailable for tournament play. Which, unless of course some scenario comes out that says that you can run 400 points with no commander, then of course you would then be able to drop this bad boy in there, which would be really funny i'm watching amg to see if they do put out a 400 point scenario that says no commander because this will be hitting the table um if that happens so uh, <laughs> um we have 33 hull on this thing 33 hull and we have three anti-squadron dice two blue and a black we still have the same movement we still have the same uh defense tokens our our, our stats have changed we have four commands still six squadron and five engineering uh, we are, have gained way more shields and dice. We're at six shields in the front, five, and then five in the auxiliary. Uh, five on the sides, five in the auxiliary, and three on the rear. So way more shields. Uh, this is an absolute centerpiece. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible uh, in a bigger game to have one of these. They're so much fun. And for this one, this is designing... To, this, is, this one wants to be the centerpiece for a much larger fleet. This one makes for a really nice centerpiece ship for like a 600-point battle or a thousand point battle or something like that because it really wants to support a larger fleet this is a ship that doesn't want to be by itself and uh because of that it's got four officers it's still got the weapons team and it's got four four fleet commands four count them four fleet commands you can run all of your or uh, you know you can run a fleet command for every different command you want on this one you still have an offensive retrofit and a ion cannon and a turbo laser as well so you can do an awful lot with this. You can run this as a complete support ship that also has is armed to the teeth. Uh, or you, you know you can kind of run it however you want. Four officers is also absolutely incredible. You've got what four blue in the front, five red in the front. Um, you know you got seven dice in the sides. You've got six dice in the auxiliaries and four dice in the rear. If this thing salvos, it could salvo with four dice. Again, all of these things would be 
kind of uh, pretty OP in, in standard 400 point games. So I'm kind of glad they made it a 381, although it'd be really tempted to run a, uh, a <laughs> you know, like a, a 410 point game or something like that one of these days just to see how this it would probably just completely demolish everything because there's no way I don't think anybody else would be able to you wouldn't have enough dice to bring on it to be able to bring it down there's no way it would die. you might be able to get half points on it though and we'll go jump to our most expensive version the executor 2 class star dreadnought this one is the most expensive ship in the game at 411 points it is absolutely a, a, a behemoth now oddly enough I think this one is actually uh, costed for smaller games than its predecessor because this one isn't built to be a centerpiece that's supporting the rest of the fleet. This one is built to be the fleet. It's got four officer slots still. It's got the the uh, it's got its uh, weapons team. It has a single fleet command, so it can run intensify firepower, which uh, you know it certainly may want. It's got two offensive retrofit, two ion cannons, and two turbo lasers. Four command, six squadron, five engineering rainbow for anti-squadron so it can still do the red range it's got all three colors of dice in its anti-squadron battery it's got 10 dice in the front arc five red five blue absolutely insane four red in the side arcs three blue and one black also two or three red three blue and a black in i mean it's auxiliary arc is better than a lot of ships front arc uh and then of course it's got two red a blue and a black in the rear it's absolutely breathtaking it's incredible and everybody should be able to get a chance to run something like this at least once in their life because uh it's 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 crazy it's like you almost laugh at how how uh, how much overkill this ship is but but it's beautiful it's beautiful and i love it all right we've got four titles available for the superstar destroyer uh we've got the executor uh at only two points uh this one's really cool it says you can be assigned any number of command tokens of any type uh, instead of uh, the tokens equal to your command value. So if you want to have, um, you know, if you want to stack like engineering tokens or something like that, you can totally do that. That one works really well for the uh, for versions that are running fleet command because you may want to do your own repairs, but then have also repair tokens left for like shields, you know, shields to maximum and, and things like that, or, or any kind of uh, token generation mechanics that are going to want to use the same uh, token multiple rounds in a row but maybe you also want to have different commands queued up uh, you know it lets you do a lot of stuff like that but you kind of have to you kind of have to plan you, you you need other things to go with executor to make it uh, really good because it's not a title that really works on its own next up we have the eclipse at only three points uh the eclipse is a pretty good one that works pretty much on its own and at only three points uh when an enemy ship overlaps you the enemy ship suffers a face up damage card instead of a face down damage card uh, you're so big a lot of ships are going to overlap you uh, and so that one doesn't like that just every version of the ship that's just taking advantage of the size and not the build itself and uh, your size is always going to be a factor so that's a fun one um, next up at four points my personal favorite the ravager it is it triggers off of concentrate fire which is my favorite command um, your concentrate fire tokens can be either re-roll an attack die or add an attack die to your attack pool if you add a die the die must be of a color already in your attack pool so what makes this one so good is it synergizes with just the huge ship's ability to get a token anytime it does a concentrate fire what this basically means is that when you do concentrate fire you're adding two dice to your attack pool instead of just re-rolling and that is absolutely insane because no, there's, there's no there's no world I can't think of a single use case in which case you'd be like no no I actually want to re-roll this die instead of adding a die because when you're adding a die you're rolling it anyway so you'd always just rather add a die than you know than than just re-roll a die um, unless there's some you know maybe some future proof maybe there's some card that says you can only have one purple die in your in your pool or something like that something weird. Um, but it, it, it's good It's good that it gives you the option, but I would never choose to re-roll as opposed to just add a die because I've got other things that give me re-rolls too. And the Annihilator at eight points is got a pretty cool ability. It says, when attacking a squadron, you may re-roll one attack die. And this is for every time you're attacking a squadron, which makes it exceptionally well on this ship that happens to have so many anti-squadron dice, especially multiple versions of this ship with red anti-squadron dice uh, mean that you're going to get lots of re-rolls 
with the Annihilator, although it is eight points, so it's a little on the expensive side. Let's take a look at a couple of build ideas for this ship. Now, some of these, uh, you, you, you know, I've, I've mixed and matched and came up with lots of interesting uh, options. So let's talk about the uh, Star Dreadnought Command prototype first. Um, I like Eclipse on this one. You're taking advantage of the size without having to depend on too much else. I like Link Turbo Laser Towers on just about any ship with black uh, with red dice. It's the probably the, one of the best upgrades in the entire game. Uh, leading shots on here allows you to spend a blue die to get your re to get re rolls. Again, you've got a lot of dice just about everywhere. Uh, leading shots and link turbo lasers are really kind of saying, "Hey, you can re roll lots of stuff." Leading shots also happens to work really well against uh, squadrons if you do the blue uh, shenanigans, the blue dice, because you can throw your two blue. You can spend one to re roll the other one if you absolutely need to. Uh, we're also giving this guy local fire control, uh, and now you're going to be able to salvo, which is a really cool thing. Um, this one also wants to be doing some squadron support. Uh, we're going to put Admiral Chirino on this one. What I like about Chirino is uh, he's saying, hey, so the squadrons can now move, um, even if they're engaged, which is super groovy. Um, so I like that one. I've got Riva Demens, or Demesny. Um, you know, after you're declared as the target of an attack, if the defending hull zone has at least one shield, which, again, a ship this big, probably will, um, you know, you can exhaust this card to ready a defense token. Uh, if you're doing some if you're doing some fancy stuff with local fire control, that could potentially allow you to uh, kind of maximize your, your the fact that you had to, you know, you had to replace a defense token. So now you might only have one, you know, one salvo, right? And so now you can potentially salvo multiple times in a single round and taking advantage of that firepower, which she's really fun for that. So I like Riva and the local fire control working together here. And Destructor Goran is just good for, you know, shooting squadrons, which again, this this is one that wouldn't mind it wouldn't mind doing it. Rapid launch base is actually pretty cool on here because you can start out you, you can you have so much room to deploy those squadrons, you can put them, you know, you're, you're taking advantage of the size of the ship. Rapid Launch Base and Eclipse are both taking advantage of the size of the ship. Um, up next, my favorite, it's the SSD Assault Prototype. I really like to run builds kind of like this when I do bring a Superstar Destroyer to a tournament. Um, I, I love running Director Krennic on this guy with Ravager and Spinal Armament. It gives me so many dice. It's absolutely insane. And it also makes my rear. If somebody... People like to get behind you. People like to stay out of the front arc. They like to stay out of even the sides. They like to try and get to the rear. And all of a sudden this turn... I've one-shotted a ship from my rear before with all of this. Having spinal armament uh, and having like four dice in the rear. And then having, um, you know, concentrate fire with Ravager. Gave me six dice out of the rear. Uh, you know, you don't expect that out of the rear of his ship. That's a bigger attack than most ship's frontal arcs have. So, you know, it is it is possible uh, to really surprise some people with this. But Krennic really helps your, your red dice rerolls, and this ship has a ton of red dice with spinal armament. Um, I've got Tactical Expert. With, uh, running something like this competitively, you, you have to think, it, you know, if you're going to try, your biggest weakness is like that all your eggs are in this one basket. So if you get... Uh, somebody decides to play some shenanigans with you and do some dial manipulation, which can happen, whether it's through a boarding team or, or, or a little flotilla trying to jam you. Uh, you need some way to be able to get what is most important back. A lot of times people run engineering that way. Uh, since this one is running Ravager, Concentrate Fire is my most important command on this ship. I need it for a Ravager. I need it for a gunnery team. And so I need to make sure that I can always have a concentrate fire when I need it. Even if I get raided, I can always just use the uh, the the token that you get to kind of cancel out the raid, right? So um, lots of great stuff there. So I need tactical expert for that. That that also allows me to queue up things like engineering and uh, you know because again if I've got Moff Jerjerod as my commander, I can just do engineering every turn. I've still got everything available. If I'm not running many squadrons. I, I got Concentrate Fire on demand. I've got Nav Yaw from Jerjerod. And then I've, I'll dial up Engineering. So anytime I do need to heal, I'll have those ready. Which is a fun fun way to go. Admiral Ozzel lets me turn forward uh, at the beginning. So maybe I can even get round one shots. Gunnery Team lets me take two shots out the front. Quad Laser Turrets. This one's kind of optional here. But it gives me counter one. So if those squadrons are coming in, I can attack them back. Point defense reroutes it helps with the counter one in case I end up rolling a crit 
or for regular attacks. The SW7 Ion battery is just an incredible thing when you have a lot of blue dice. And again, this ship does also have a lot of blue dice. Maybe I, oh, maybe I needed a specific amount of dice to kill you, but I rolled a whole bunch of accuracies. And now all of a sudden it guarantees that blue dice are always going to do damage if you want them to. And that's beautiful. Heavy ion emplacements, one of, the, one of the best ion cannon upgrades in the game. Helps really punch a hole right through somebody. Um, XI-7 turbo lasers kind of does the same thing. Uh, spinal armaments, again, I've already talked about that. And Ravager, it's just, uh, it's like the perfect storm. I, I really like this type of a build on on an uh, on an SSD. Uh, and I have some more f fun fun ones for the bigger for the bigger stuff. Um, I have an ex executor 1 Star Dreadnought with the executor title so it's going to be able to have a lot of tokens and I loaded it up with all of the different fleet supports. You know, so we maybe we want to do concentrate fire, we want to do shields to maximum, we want to do all fighters follow me and take evasive action. I put that one on there so we can maybe we can turn a little bit better, or maybe the other other ships can turn. Maybe I'm running two SSDs or something like that in a crazy build. Um, and uh, but yeah, we'd have to stock up a lot of tokens. Taskmaster Grint will help us with some of the tokens. We got Hondo Anaka there for tokens. We got Vanto, and I put Captain Brunson on there since we got a fourth officer. Give us a little bit of a uh, a little bit of crazy like oh I just want to cancel a die. Oh did you get a black die on me and I didn't like? Let me just cancel. We don't really have a whole lot of dice cancellation. So it'd be just it's kind of adding a little insult to injury. I'm already at 33 hull. You know, if, were you going to even try and attack me? Because I can even cancel a die outright before I spend any of the defense tokens. Kind of fun stuff there. Um, and then if we're going for an executor two, uh, you know, uh, just doing doing crazy stuff here. I, I wanted to put a little bit of an uh, an anti squadron uh, uh, thought on this um, annihilator. Uh, you know, Agent Callus. Really good for that. Um, and uh, speaking of anti-squadron, before somebody goes into this, I want to rewind a little bit because I think I misspoke when I talked about Goron being anti-squadron. He helps your own squadrons. This one is a squadron support build. Uh, Callus being the anti. I had toyed around with putting Callus on the other one. So, but no, Callus here making this one a, uh, a an effective anti-squadron ship. It's look, it's got three anti-squadron dice and the red dice in there. It's going to get lots of attacks. I get free re-rolls here. I get a free die of any uh, type that I want with Callus. By the way, if I'm playing at this point level, there could be a lot more aces than just four as well. So we have lots of opportunities for Callus to trigger. Palpatine is always amazing on any Superstar Destroyer build. Oh, were you going to declare me as a target of attack? Exhaust one of your tokens. You know, every time. It also means for salvos, too. Were you going to salvo me? Exhaust one of your tokens. Damage control officer. Amazing, amazing option. Uh, letting you letting those contains cancel any critical. Uh, expert shield techs. Great option. You've got two redirects. It's very cool. Um, gunnery team. Again, I put it on a lot of these builds. Uh, quad laser turrets. Counter one and feeding into the anti-squadron theme here. Point defense reroute doing the same thing. Uh, leading shots in SW7. You got so many dice, you need lots of rerolls. Leading shots is going to give that to you. SW7 is going to mean you don't need to reroll the blue ones because they're perfect just the way they are. Um, like turbo laser towers. I put quad turbo laser cannons on this one too because this is one that you almost never use. But here's a you got so many dice, it's probably going to work. It's going to give you the accuracies you want. Since you've got SW7 ion cannons, you're like if you were able to get this to trigger and get those red accuracies, you now you can just convert all your blues to damage. You know, and it's a really a nice way to make that work and really maximize the damage output um, while still kind of stopping all of their defense tokens. So you have a lot of cool stuff there. And of course, Link Turbo Lasers. That's also for your anti-squadron attack. If you want to do one really big anti-squadron attack, you can do that as well. You're going to have lots of reroll potential and adding dice potential as well. So much fun stuff you can do with a build like this. But uh, but most of them are going to be these, uh, those first two ships uh, because those are the tournament legal ones, the ones that fit into a 400-point game. I love this ship. I think it's amazing that they were able to make it. I think it's absolutely a, uh, a, a miracle that it actually showed up. It's the ship that I had as number one on my want list for forever and so it finally was revealed and I was over the moon. And uh, and so I, I, I'm always a big, big fan of it. And hopefully you guys are too. All right, guys, that concludes the Super Star Destroyer breakdown as well as my entire series of ship breakdowns for Star Wars Armada. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I've had a lot of people talking about squadrons. Maybe that will be something that gets worked on in 2023. I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much 
uh, for watching. If you like what I do here and want to support the channel, there's uh, links in the description below. You can follow the social media links, join the Discord. Patreon is a great option if you're interested in that. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this channel possible. I want to thank you all so much for your continued support. Uh, may the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. I will talk to you later. See ya.